a new vlog. I typically begin my reading vlogs on Mondays, but today's Tuesday. We're a little behind. I didn't read yesterday. I didn't feel like it. I don't feel like it today. But for the sake of consistency and pushing myself to read instead of watching TikToks for four hours a day, here I am. My vlogs are becoming pretty episodic because if you don't watch the previous one, you're probably going to be a little bit lost watching this one. Mainly just because I start off vlogs in the middle of books. This week I'm in the middle of Scythe by Neil Schusterman. More specifically, I'm on page 230. I don't remember if that's the same number as last time or not. But this is the first in a series about this world where they've cured death. But to maintain that there's no overpopulation, they elect these Scythe figures to kill people. And then these two main characters are chosen as apprentices to this one scythe. They have to compete for a position that they both don't want. And it just follows the morals of that world. I love Neil Schusterman because they're such nostalgic books. I haven't read this one before, but I have read Neil Schusterman's other books in high school. And so his writing style just brings back memes. I'm not loving the characters, but I like the writing and the plot of this. I have my vegan chocolate chip cookies from Trader Joe's. Welcome in. Also, I want to mention this before I forget because it's not big enough to include in a final review, but I keep noticing a pattern in this book. Am I the only one or is it a little bit fat phobic? There's so many lines where Neil Schusterman mentions fatness, but only in the context of like, it's a no-no thing because now that people are like perfect and can change themselves, being fat is seen as like, why would you do that? And then like just instances like that where it talks about size as if it's like a pitiable thing. And just now there was a part where she was like, it looked like they were straining at the seams and it was unbecoming or like not in those words, but still I'm just like, Mr. Schusterman, some of us are fat and can't cure it by making my metabolism faster with gene therapy. So like, <laughs> fuck off. It's so gloomy this morning. I love rain though, so I'm not complaining. So last night, as is becoming tradition, I started reading and then I fell asleep. So I made it to page 252 of Scythe. And I feel like I have no other updates because it's just remaining the same as it always is. It's fine. I just keep falling falling asleep or reading it, and that's cool. That magical sound is my bathtub filling up with water. Today I did get some reading done on my lunch break, so I got to page 300. So now I only have like 130 pages of this left, which I could easily do in like two hours. And I wanna dedicate an effort to finishing this tonight, or at least get as far as I can tonight, because I've got nothing else going on. I need to get off TikTok. I do have an additional comment that I want to make on this because I might forget for my final review. It's so hard to describe because this is a talented author, it's a cool world. I guess it's just that I have no attachment whatsoever to the characters because this book is written in third person and that detaches you so much from the actual characters of it that it's like you could interchange these two main characters with anyone else in the book and it would read the same way. Also, I'm the hugest fan of romance in books. Like, if I hear that a book doesn't have romance, I'm likely to DNF it because it's a huge motivator for me. I will never be one to sit here and say, like, I love books without romance because it's just not true. I love a good romance. But in this book... I'm kind of wishing <laughs> that we didn't have a romance because it doesn't need to be there and it's really weird and not well developed and not explained. It feels like there's something missing or it feels like it's playing it too safe or I don't even know. It's freezing, so I wanted to get nice and warm. I went to turn on my heater and it caused my fire alarm to go off, so I put on leggings and a sweater instead. I'm gonna snuggle up now in bed and hope that it doesn't get any colder. But as I wanted to, I finally got a big chunk of the way through Scythe. So I'm now on page 400, so I've only got like 30 pages left, that'll be easy. It took a couple twists I was not anticipating. I thought that this book was a little bit predictable. It was original and it was smart, 
but it was just a little bit predictable but it took it to a couple places I didn't think it was gonna go so I think it redeemed itself I just still can't get over that gut feeling like there's something about this book that's a little bit too obvious I just don't know how to explain it at all <laughs> I forgot I was recording. <laughs> it's really good. I'll update when I'm done in like 20 minutes. Okay. I finished it. And the ending was so good. Maybe just the middle section was lagging and predictable, but the ending of it was like bam, boom, bada, bang. Even like the insta love part of it, I wasn't that mad about in the end. So I think it redeemed itself. I realized when things were occurring that I actually cared for the characters a lot more than I thought I did. So I guess it snuck up on me. Maybe it was just subtle. I don't know. I feel like I just did a 180 from the last clip I filmed, but that was pretty good. I think I'm gonna do a four stars just because once again when I read books I just want to fall in love with the characters and like feel like I'm in the book with them But there was always the sensation that I knew I was reading a book when I was reading this I wasn't like fully immersed in the atmosphere of it So it's so difficult to describe what about Neil Schusterman's writing. I just don't click with but concept wise Fantastic. I do want to read book two but I kind of decided something in my head and now I'll vocalize it so out in the world. I'm gonna put reading library books on hold. I have like four of them out from the library. I'm gonna return them. The exception being Serpent and Dove because I actually do really, really, really wanna read this one. I have like four more books on NetGalley that I have to review. A hundred physical books on my TBR that I've been neglecting and I'm trying to do my TBR jar and be more involved with that. So I think the next book on Kindle that I have to review, there's like three of them that are already out. So I think the book I want to start is called The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. This book is about this guy whose wife wants to divorce him because he is not good at giving her pleasure. He realizes like he has no game. So what he does is he joins this secret guys only book club where they read like Regency romances and it's all about like using this book club as a way to like get his wife back and like learn how to romance her like the men in the books do which sounds so absurd but so cute like I can't stop smiling it just sounds so fun and I struggle giving this book large expectations because I'm so scared it's just not gonna be as good as it sounds I'm gonna give that one a whirl I hate vlogging first thing in the morning because I feel like my voice is so scratchy but as predicted I fell asleep while reading last night so this book so far it's funny I I was laughing out loud at certain parts. One thing I didn't realize is that the main character actually has a stutter. I'm not sure if that's own voices and I'm not sure if it's well done, but it's just like a facet of the character I didn't realize was there, which is nice. So the book just jumps right in to them getting divorced. And here's the thing is, I'm usually not someone to pick up like women's fiction books where they're already married or they already have kids and they experience marriage trouble because like can't relate. But this book is still really good. The guy is on a major league baseball team. So there's like that boyishness of being around his teammates. So there's like, fun relatable parts to it even though it's a bit like older than my age range. I like that it alternates chapters between the husband and the wife. I thought it would just be about the guy but it shows the woman as well and I really like seeing her side. The only issue I'm encountering so far is that they went to their first book club meeting with all the men that are like experiencing relationship troubles. And they're explaining to the main character like why they do it. And you can tell <laughs> this book is written by a woman when all these men are talking to one another because they'll be like, men are so terrible to women and go off about how terrible men treat women. And it's like, dudes on a sport team wouldn't be that woke. I don't know what about it is so unrealistic to me because guys can be self-aware. And then they're talking about why they read romance novels and he's like, modern romance novelists use patriarchal society in the old British aristocracy to explore gender-based limitations placed. And just the language of it is so elevated for what the situation 
is. It's like just dudes getting together to talk about sex. So that's the only part that's grating on me so far. I'm just like, they wouldn't talk like that. <laughs> but one thing I didn't realize was in the book that I really enjoy is that there's actually selections from the romance novel they're reading. So alongside reading the regular storyline, you're also getting the Regency romance book and that's so well written. I really like those parts so far. So yeah, depending on the smuttiness level of this, I think it's gonna be pretty tame. But so far, it's looking like it's gonna be a great book. Good evening. Today's been a day. I didn't even intend on taking a nap, but here we are. <laughs> I got home from work today and actually delved into my book. So I got a good chunk of the way through the book and it's so easy and fun to read. I'm currently 40% through the book. I think this morning I was on 13. So it goes by really fast. I don't know if it's because the book is short or just because it's so addicting, but especially for a book that's a little bit more mature than I am, like they are married and they have kids, it's super fun. Are you sweepy? Yes, good girl. It is way past my bedtime, but I just finished my book, which I did not anticipate I would do tonight, but it was so addicting. I'm a little teary about it, but it was so emotional. I was like, <laughs> this book is like what Nicholas Sparks books would be like if Nicholas Sparks was actually good at writing because it's this emotional tale about family and there's hardship, but it's just fun to read. There's comedic relief. It's deep without being boring or unrelatable. And I think the thing I love most about it is that it's not a glamorous love story. It's about people with actual problems trying to fix them. And it's so human. And I don't think I've ever read a romance book that comes at it from that angle of they're already together, but they're experiencing problems and now they have to restore the relationship to a healthy relationship. So it was a really interesting angle and I absolutely loved the family. This book focused equally on the mom and the dad so you got to see both of their sides and their inner workings and the insecurities that lead them to behave the way they do in their relationship and I was afraid that this book would be more of like a literary fiction women's fiction type story but it really wasn't. There was steamy scenes, there's like really funny scenes with Gavin and his baseball team. I don't have a ton negative to say about it but I will say I'm only gonna give this book book 4.5 stars because first of all I think the ending of it was a little bit fast and convenient and then additionally throughout the book there were certain times where the characters would talk about like gender roles or toxic masculinity and the way that men don't communicate because obviously this book pokes fun at the fact that men aren't supposed to read romance and so they're in this book club that talks about romance and the guys on the baseball team are actually really great because they understand feminism and treating women right but sometimes the characters would get up on soap boxes and there would be lines of dialogue that I kid you not it's like am I reading a romance novel or an essay for a women and gender studies class because for example one time one of the characters got a pumpkin spice latte and one of the men was like men not ordering PSLs is an example of toxic masculinity pervading the mundane and it was just so extra and like didn't at all match the rest of the dialogue of the book and like the tone of the scene and the context so I get and I I understand and I appreciate that they were trying to include those messages of like men can have pumpkin spice lattes but the way it was written just didn't fit the tone of the scene and so it was so awkward. That probably only happened a total of five times though throughout the whole book so it wasn't like I hated the writing style. It was just part of it that made me go hmm. That's really my only complaint. This book was so soft you get to see a really hot guy be like a great dad and be really communicative and apologetic for not being his best. You get to see like the wife unpacking her childhood trauma to figure out how they can support each other. It's just so cute but meaningful and different than anything I've ever read. But this definitely held up to the test of is the book as good as the synopsis sounds? It was so funny and so addicting. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars and wow. I really need to go to bed because I'm gonna be dead at work tomorrow. But I hate going to bed without starting a new book because I feel like I just need to like get a little bit done. And the book I wanna read next is a library book. And I'm just reading it because I need to return it to the library. But I 
also am interested because my best friend Rachel just texted me that she read this book and it was so good. She read it in one sitting. Anyway, it's Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. I'm gonna have to start this and give you a synopsis later because I have no clue. I just know it's enemies to lovers, it's angsty, it's sexy, and it's about witches. Last update of the night, I promise. I read about 40 pages of Serpent and Dove, and I understand why Rachel read this in one sitting. The writing style is so good so far. This is set in a fantasy universe inspired by France. So everything is French and like the streets and the setting is all like cobblestones and everything. I don't know, just the vibe of it. Love it. This book is about this girl named Louisa. She's a witch, but two years previous to the book's beginning, she swore off witchcraft and did not want to be involved anymore. So she moved to a new city to get away. There is also this man who works kind of the equivalent of a soldier where they are trying to keep witchcraft out of the city. So this ex-witch and a witch hunter have to work together. For what? I don't know yet, but I can already tell it's gonna be so good. It's just so fun so far and I love the vibe. I love the character. I love the idea of it. So if I don't end up giving this book four or five stars, I'm not gonna post this vlog. I don't know. It'll be the hugest letdown of this year. When you come home on a Thursday afternoon and you're not that tired but you read in bed and so you automatically fall asleep for four hours and then you wake up at 11 p.m. which is when you usually go to bed so you're not tired and then whenever you do need to go to bed because you have work in the morning again. You're still not tired, so you're probably gonna get four hours of sleep then go into work and be exhausted all day at work. Fucking mint. I just wanna continue reading because it was so good, but I need to stop. Sarah J Mass blurbed this. That means nothing to me, but probably something to someone else. <laughs> okay, good night. Opened up my closet to get a face mask out. Gordo decided this box on the floor is a new bed. So yeah, you heard me right. Face mask. I didn't record any of this earlier, but all night I have been bathtubbing, relaxing. It is Friday night. I want to treat myself to feeling good. So I've been taking a load off and getting further into Serpent and Dove. And I'm now 189 pages in and I love her. Oh my god. This book is enemies to lovers. Goodness. And this main character is so snarky and so funny and so stubborn. Not in like the contrived way that a lot of YA main characters are where they're like, hee hee hee, I don't do what people want me to do. She's actually genius. <laughs> She's so smart. It's like, if you like Lila Bard from A Darker Shade of Magic, you will like this main character. Ugh. And it's the whole vibe of like this girl who's so rowdy and explicit and doesn't care what other people think of her versus this literal like church goer who has sworn service to an archbishop to protect his land from witches and she just bursts into his life and is like cursing up a storm, talking about boobs. It just does not care and it's so fun. I really want to read this all tonight just because I cannot stop. It's so good. And people have been talking about how polarizing this book is. Like people loved it, but then people hated it. I don't understand how you could not love this. <laughs> good morning, everyone. So I'm finally having some breakfast. I made some cereal. And last night I made it to page 212, but I still love it. So I'm going to keep reading today. I made a burrito for lunch. I don't know if you can tell, but I had a little cry about this book. It was getting emotional, so I cried about it. <laughs> I'm now on page 294, so I'm over halfway. Boy. That girl is a 
Hi. So I made it to page like 425 or something of Serpent and Dove. Loving her, but I need to go to the library before it closes because I have a hold to pick up and I was praying that I would finish this book before so I could just drop it off. Didn't work. So I have like five books I'm taking back. And while I drive, I want to discuss a little bit about what I've been reading. So here's the thing. We all know that I'm loving the book, but I feel like one fault of the reading vlog is that you only see a glimpse of me reading it at a time. So I've reached a lull in the book and I'm tempted to be like, it's not that good, but I know it's just because I got to a part that's not as exciting. Even though this book is getting five stars for me so far and I'm really enjoying it, we just got past the part where like all the reveals are happening and like you're finding out all the plot twists and like everyone's discovering everyone else's secrets. And I wish it was done a little bit more interestingly than the way it unfolded. Nothing's really wrong with this book, but it's just getting to the point where it's not satisfying like my personal preferences. So I've decided I don't like this library. I mean, I like them. They're just stuck in 2006 and it's fine. I had one hold to pick up, but then while I was roaming around the library looking for where the holds would be, I found another book, which I told myself I wouldn't do, so I'm mad, but it's fine. I picked up The Beautiful by Renee Audier because, oh, you can't see it. The Beautiful by Renee Audier. Disgusting cover. I hate this cover so much. The reason I got it is because my best friend Bonnie, who just read this book and said it is beautiful and I would love it. Oh my God, there's someone in the car beside me. I'm so embarrassed. We're leaving. So I got that book because Bonnie said it was good. All I know is that it's about vampires and it's set in the 1800s and I have a massive hole in my heart that has been unfilled by Twilight content since I was 15. So I'm ready to read vampires again. I got The Water Dancer by Tony Easy Coats because I have to review it and I have no idea what it's about. Should I go? I'm going! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my God, that's what driving with Woody novels is like. <laughs> also, one more reason why my library hold system is whack. You can't just go up to a shelf and get your hold and do self checkout. I don't think they even have self checkout at this library now that I'm realizing it. I think you have to go and talk to someone every time you need something. So I had to go and ask him for my hold and they have to check out for you. I just realized they don't have self checkout. Like it's literally the worst library ever, but their selection is so good. As Kara Cass once said, the selection. Can you tell I've given up on getting my camera to cooperate? Should I get a car tripod? No, that would just encourage me to vlog while driving, which we don't need. Oh, I was gonna go to that Starbucks before I, uh, I told myself I shouldn't spend money. Wait, but I have a gift card. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go across three lanes to get Starbucks before I go home. I just finished Serpent and Dove, and as predicted, it is getting a full five stars. It was so good. The one thing that I can't stop thinking about though is that I loved the first half a lot more than I liked the second half, which I wanna preface all my criticisms of this book by saying it's still gonna get five stars, so like it was good enough for me. But the first half had so many good tension points and it was so angsty and so well written. And I feel like the last half when they were like learning to trust one another more and the plot was picking up, it we lost those moments that like made me laugh or like made me feel really connected to it. And it just was kind of like fueled by plot, which was fine. But there were just a couple scenes and like reveals and plot points that I think I could have taken a different turn with to make it more, I don't know. I just feel like this lost a couple opportunities to like be more angsty or be more something, but it's kind of difficult to review because I also really, really liked it. And I'm sure like in a month I'll forget my criticisms about it and I'll just see it on a bookshelf and be like, oh my God, I love that book so much. Definitely want to read book two. I don't even know when that's going to come out, probably like fall of next year. But it was so good and I understand the hype and I don't know why people don't like it because I feel like it's so good. Five stars, cannot wait to buy a copy. The next book I wanted to read was the one that I got from the library today, The Water Dancer by Ta-Nehisi Coates. But I just read page one and the writing style is almost incomprehensible. I was going to mention I've read Ta-Nehisi Coates' books before and he tends to overwrite his books, which it was nonfiction. So I was like, okay, it's just because it's that genre. But the first sentence of this book is an entire paragraph long and I'm already tired. 
just reading page one. So I'm sure this book is someone else's cup of tea. It's probably beautiful and meaningful, but I would struggle <laughs> if I was gonna read that. So I've decided not to. So I have a couple other options. I have that book I picked up from the library today, the beautiful, or I can read an old book on my TBR or I can read a book from my TBR jar. Should I read a book from my TBR jar or the oldest book that I own? TBR. My mom said I should read the oldest book on my TBR, which is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. All I know is that it's historical fiction, World War II, about like two sisters, and it follows like the women's side of the war and not like the men off fighting. I know multiple people who say this is their favorite book. Someone I met at a conference the other week came up to me because she saw I was reading and she mentioned this is her favorite book. So it has good hype surrounding it. I'm looking forward to it. morning from the witty noodle household mother and i are on a mission to go get breakfast i read a lot of my book last night and this morning because little gremlins whose names may or may not rhyme with schmordo and schmozy woke me up early so i read about 100 pages of the nightingale and it's pretty good it's not like outstanding but i'm not mad at it it's easy to read but we're gonna go get breakfast and i will update you later when i am back home and full of sausage Hello everyone. It's been a few hours. I've been reading here and there, but mostly just sitting around. I made it to page 120 of my book. It's still good. It's like fast paced and interesting, but right now I'm not like emotional about it. I'm not super loving it. But again, I feel like I always make a judgment about a book and then as soon as it's over, I take back my statement because the ending of it made up for the middle of it. So rather than giving you a full review when I'm only a fourth of the way in, I'm gonna keep reading. Good evening. I want to read a little bit more tonight, but I'm not convinced that I will and then stay awake to end this vlog. So this is the end of this week's vlog. I got to page 172 of The Nightingale, which is just under halfway. I think one way I can summarize how I'm feeling about this book is that it would be a good audiobook listen. It's kind of just an average book that's easy to read and that I'm interested in, but I don't think it's gonna have like a lasting impression or anything, which again, I could be speaking way too soon. But so far it's enjoyable. I like the two characters. Like there's really nothing against it, but there's nothing like so spectacular about it. Reading this back to back with The Shadow of the Wind, which is another World War II era book. It just doesn't compare. That book was so amazing and this one's just like all right. But alas we must end off the vlog here so thank you for watching. Why am I getting so sleepy? It's only like nine. It's only nine. I thought it was ten o'clock this whole time because my oven says ten o'clock. Oh my gosh. Daylight savings is ruining me. Okay everyone goodbye.